Is that yet? <laughs> You're live. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're, we're back. Let's give it a few minutes for everybody to hop back on. Please, please come back. Come by. Let's share again. Oh, Michael, thank you for watching. Yeah. Leah Clown. Absolutely. We apologized. I'm sure it's coincidence, but every time we start, uh, uh, the lack of a better term, calling out the stupidity in the field, uh, it happens. I'm shaking the table. No, it has nothing to do with that. I mean, every time, hello, Leah, again. Uh, every time that we get on a topic like this that basically is doing something that can be of danger to the enemy, these videos shut off. Because um, what we're talking about here is the case that we d we're dealing with right now is we've had someone come into a location that we pre invest previously investigated under the guise of doing a documentary, and they have reopened and they've stirred up activity in the home in the location again. So I'm trying to we're trying to get this information out there about making sure that stuff like that doesn't happen. And every time we start talking about stuff that it, it could be detrimental to the enemy and he has, his attack on our lives, this stuff happens. So I'm going to say it like I do every video. Satan, you're a liar, and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what? Thank you for everyone who has tuned back in. Um, we definitely want to make sure you don't let some people in your home um, to investigate. Because I would say 80% of the field doesn't really care about helping people. They only care about documenting evidence and putting it up on a YouTube channel. Um, we just want to make sure, and we don't care nothing about that. We just want to make sure that you are at peace at your home, your place of business, and, um, and we really want to make sure that you're comfortable and you get the right information up there. Um, yeah, those, those 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 haunted haunted places or those scary places, all that's fun and stuff. But uh, uh, I'm too old to be flopping around at night in the middle of a graveyard. I ain't been doing it, and I'm too fat to run if somebody comes after me. So, and I've had a heart attack, so we don't need to deal with that. That's right. <laughs> uh, but to go back on something else that Ed had mentioned in the previous video, talking about kind of investigator ethics. Yeah. So this pre this client that we're discussing this team that has gone in, it has been a month since those people went in and did whatever it is they did in that location. And they've had no contact with the client since. <coughs> that is, I mean, that's way, way too long to hear back from somebody. We try to make a, make it a point that even if we don't have evidence, uh, review completed, we stay in contact with our clients until it's done. And even after the fact, I mean, Ed said that we, we have clients from, two years ago that we still touch base with occasionally just to make sure that everything's still fine in their life. So if you're dealing with a team that's not trying to stay in contact with you, especially if they've collected evidence and they have said, Hey, we will turn this, get this evidence to you to let you know what's going on. If they're not contacting you, something's wrong. You need to contact them. So uh, I would say a good turnaround time for evidence review, I mean, it depends on the length of the, the investigation itself. Now, if it's a like a short little six-hour investigation, you got to keep in mind if you're running, let's say six hours, two cameras, both running the entire time, that right there's 12 hours of video that you have to go over. If you're running four audio recorders, that's 24 hours of audio that you have to go over. So, I mean, and pictures is easy, you know, that's right. easy to go over, but you're looking at just the amount of time spent. Because I've run into situations where I know I've been uh, I've heard of investigators that did eight, ten hour lockdowns with full gear, yeah. you know, twelve, you know, eight DVR cameras, multiple video recorders, handhelds, audio recorders, and then they come back in two days and say, "Well, we didn't find anything." Uh, unless you've got like a, a twenty man crew on your team with each person doing one thing. It takes bare minimum, even on a simplified investigation, like I said, at six hours, uh, two weeks, I would say, would be a good time for turnaround on, on, any, on any evidence. And if you can't do it in two weeks, because, I mean, we have regular jobs. This is not our full-time job. 
If you can't get it done in two weeks, again, keep that contact going with the client. Um, hey, you know, we haven't got it done or we've got this much done. We can, uh, if you, you know, you can either wait until it's all done or we can go ahead and turn this over to you. I mean, we like to be able to present everything all at one time. But just, again, it's that contact. You know, as an investigator, you want to make sure that you're staying in contact with your client. And if you are the client, you want to make sure that you've got that continual communication between you and the team until they have done what the, the service that you've asked them to do, whether it be to collect data, to turn over evidence, or to remove something from their home. Yeah, and the other thing is, just like you would do maybe a Yelp review on a mechanic, or maybe check out his uh, Google reviews, or maybe call friends or family, I would even do, I mean, Facebook's amazing about how much information is out there. People's got their phone number, addresses. And I'm sure people who put their bank account information out there, I'm sure, but um, take, take the name of these investigators and Google them. Look up their YouTube channel, and if, and if every time they go somewhere that they found Satan himself, you know, roasting a pig over a fire every time they go to a place, you might not want them in your house. Um, I like the analogy there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, you know, and, and you know, or or and Mike and I kind of ran across this, and we started giggling about it. Uh, we ran across a group a year or two ago of. Uh, their, their spiritual advisor and demonologist, spiritual advisor and demonologist, uh, looked like a demon. I mean, it, it had, you know, you, you can dress what you want to. I get that. But, you know, if you're supposed to be my demonologist and I think you're pretty much Satan himself walking in. You can't tell the difference between the demon and the demonologist. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and if anyone ever tells you, Here's another trick is um, if a team says, hey, we have access to uh, an ordained ministry, ask for a picture or a copy of the ordination. If they got it offline, run. I would step that up and I would ask for, I mean, if it's an ordained minister or someone like that, then they're going to have credentials that you can easily access through, any, through whatever church they're affiliated with. So I would ask for the name of the minister. Um, unfortunately, and I know that this is becoming uh, less and less of a thing. Uh, anybody can go online now and get an ordination. Uh, yep. Although I know that I think they have made it now so that most people getting ordained online cannot perform marriages anymore, yep. which was the yep. main reason people were getting ordained online. But if if they've got an, you know an ord, ord, an ordination from Google.com, they're not qualified. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just what it is. And it, I'm I'm also going to go out on a limb here and say that it doesn't require an ordination. Or a piece of paper in order to, you know, cast something out of your home or get something out. I mean, it helps to have a priest or a pastor or something like that. The main thing you want is someone with a, a maturity level that is right and someone that a spiritual maturity level and is right with God. Because I've they what Leah? Yeah, and it's actually affiliated with a church and attends. So there's that. Let's see who else hopped on. Jennifer Seaton, where have you been? You're usually the first person to log in. Leah beat you today. And then Nick is back. And Ashley, thanks for joining us. Oh, there we go. So that, yeah, just be careful who you allow on your home. And just to, for those who have been have tuned in, We'll go over the details. So we have decided as a group that we are going to uh, pick three to five people and draw their name. Uh, you have until the 14th of September. Uh, send us a message through Facebook saying, I'm interested in a, just a quick little snippet. Why? You know, I want to investigate with you because why? Tell us. And tell us why you want to go, obviously. Then we'll, we'll announce on the 14th, while we're doing our next live investigation, um, that on September 27th, we're going to take you to a, to a location um, that we deem safe and um, from a paranormal aspect, from safety aspect, and where we can control the atmosphere a little bit that we know the building pretty well. 
And and if you got anybody who's interested in the paranormal and they're not watching, just tell them about this. Uh, we'll post a thing on our website and we'll share it here soon afterwards. Uh, we want to get people who that are looking to get in, involved in the paranormal. Uh, we want to make sure you're trained properly, just like um, there's all types of doctors, but we you want to make sure the doctor that's going into your operating on you knew, knows what they're doing. So the, the people that you call out for questions or concerns of the paranormal and uh, that I, know what they're doing. I wouldn't want an orthopedic surgeon trying to determine if I had a blockage in my heart. That's true. <laughs> and you don't want a proctologist cleaning out your ears. Uh, there's a visual for Whoa, you. Whoa, of all the things alive, yes. Uh, but yeah, so if you got someone in, in there in paranormal field, uh, tell them about it, submit something to us. Uh, uh, September 14th, we'll announce those. Uh, and we'll, make sure, I mentioned this in the previous video, make sure that you'll be available to come on September 27th. Yeah. Because if you can't come, then what's the point? <laughs> and, and I would even make sure you're available probably till about midnight that night. Um, we we're, we probably we try to wrap up, but you know, based on this location that we're discussing, it could be pretty active. So we might stay a little bit later, and uh, just make sure you have the availability there. And there's always Waffle House. Yeah, and there's oh, yeah. always, there's always Waffle House afterwards. So you got to put that. You got to pencil in the Waffle House visit. And that's our decompression process, uh, or artery blocking, as we call. Uh, keep one thing I want to throw in here. Keep in mind, I mean. The, since we're doing this from, as Ed put it, a location that we know, a controlled location, we can actually put kind of a time limit on it. You know, yeah. like, you know, hey, 12 o'clock, or if, you know, something's going on, we can go on up till 3. Keep in mind, in a, on, a, on an investigation of like a residence or something like that, there is no time frame. Mm -hmm. Unless the, the client has told us, I need you out of my house about such and such, uh, we are there until the job is done. So just, I wanted to throw that out there because it, yeah, it, you know, like Mike is saying, on a normal investigation, I mean, we have, if there's such a thing for us, which we have found recently, there never is. Normal? What is normal? Um, um, I would love just to walk around the dark and, and a haunted location just to have fun to play with gadgets and stuff, but that's not what we're called to do, and that's not, but that's never what's put on our plate. Uh, we don't, we've never asked for it, but we understand that's what we're called to do. Um, but we have been doing investigations where there's a certain time that the client, through our initial investigation, talking to the client and questioning them back and forth, um, they kind of give us the time frame. Hey, it's 2.45 in the morning. Okay, well, we've got to stay at least until then to see what's going on. Is it a car? Is it your neighbor's lot kicking on? It's not. So, I mean, we have sat in houses for 12, 14, 16 hours propping our eyes up with toothpicks to see if something happened. Um, and the thing is about those longer investigations, you got to know the people you're with. And that, so the, picking someone on the 14th, we're, of course, we're going to make sure you're on an axe murder or anything. And uh, we don't want to take that with you. We don't want to, you know, cause another haunted location or something. But uh, we, we are excited about this. Uh, we, we've been debating it for a few years. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's a great opportunity, one, to network some more folks. A lot of people are busy. You know, you got holidays. You work 50, 60 hours a week. You got, you know, 1,200 kids or whatever uh, if you're in Utah. And uh, so we just want to make sure that we pick the right person. Uh, we are not looking to add anyone on. Okay? Yeah. Let's we'll squash that. Right. Okay, we're happy where we're at. Um, now, that might have been a possibility of Mike didn't have a good turnaround last week, but you survived, and I'm making are fun we, of them because I've had three. Are we picking an alternative? We're picking an alternative. We're all, like we're, if Miss America can't hold the crown, we've got a backup. We've got a JV. We've got a uh, JV, JV team. We've got a JV team in this case. Uh, but we want to make sure this person uh, understands we, that what we do, how we do, give them the tools, the ability to debunk, uh, question yourselves, question the investigation, question – exactly what's going on, not to chase the evidence or the sounds, to run the investigation, that's very difficult. Um, matter of fact, we were in a case three, four years ago where instinctively, and I think Leah, uh, which is running our chat for us now, uh, Michael's wife, um, she pointed this out, we were at this house, and uh, 
whatever reason, all the men went one way and all the women went the other way constantly. And that was being done on purpose to separate us. Uh, because there are certain folks when you get around each other, you, you kind of build a stronghold there. And it was being done intentionally. And when we realized that, we quickly fixed it. Uh, so those can, I mean, we, you can be manipulated. Without even realizing it. Without realizing it. That's where self-awareness comes into play. Because what was happening, I mean, I was, I've been on investigations before where, I mean, and I, I think we all three have, where we'll be looking in one room and then a noise will occur in another room and we'll go check it out and then something will happen to somebody somewhere else. Yep. Uh, it's just trying to uh, take our attention away. Yeah, it's don't chase the sounds. Let the sounds happen and debunk that. Um, unless you feel like somebody's kicking the door down, then you need to go investigate. But, um, but we definitely would love to have some of y'all on. If you've got a family member, like I've been saying, um, the only stipulation I would say that is we're going to have to know, number one, you got to be 18 or above. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number two, I would say, and this is just no pun to Michael because I've been down his road a few times myself. If you've got a medical issue like uh, blood sugar or you're allergic to something and we pick you, you need to let us know. Let us, because if you fall out, that's a different way we respond. And my, uh, Leah is medically trained, um, which is good because Mike and I have had heart attacks. So. Uh, and one thing, another thing I want to throw out there, because I know that a lot of people that I've talked to in the past, they're like, I want to go on one. I want to go on one. So keep in mind, this is not going to, just disclaimer, this is not going to be like what you see on television. No, Lord, I hope not. Because yeah, because first of all, I mean, keep in mind, television shows, whether they are the real thing or not, I'm just going to leave that right there. <laughs> all of those shows are edited for time constraints. So mm -hmm. you got to keep in mind, if they've made a one hour show, they're not taking into account the 12 hours that nothing happened at the location that they went to. The paranormal and things of that nature are not on a time frame. They will come and go uh, whenever they want. There are some times where they're more active. There are times when they're not. You may go two nights in a row at the same time and get different activity. But we're also not the type of investigators that get out there and, what's a good word? We're not entertainers. Um, we're not, we're not going to conjure up. We're not going to, ooh, you know, it's not going to be. Over excitement. I mean, if you come with us, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna show you how we do things, and we're gonna show you how to be equipped and ready for this type of thing. If you know you're interested in the paranormal, or if it's something that you're looking at, you know, down the road, something you've been interested in trying. It's not all. It's not always fun and games. I mean, it's it'll be fun. We'll make it. Inter I mean, it'll, it'll be interesting um, for sure, especially, but. Just, I don't want anybody to go in with any false pretenses that we're going to come in and, you know, we're going to be conjuring up stuff and things going to be flying around the house or the room or wherever that we're at. Um, we've been there, but just keep in mind, I mean, it will be, it will be in seriousness. I mean, you will learn something. You will, you will go away with some definite uh, information, some education. Uh, he's, I agree with all of that. Uh, this is just an opportunity for those who follow us, or maybe you've got a coworker or a family member, your husband or your wife, um, or your adult child kind of wants to get in this, and um, you're kind of afraid they're going to end up getting shot by a caretaker of a graveyard, or they're going to go to a haunted location where they pay $80 billion to spend two hours with 4,500 other people, why someone eats a bag of Doritos. Now, I'm not knocking those locations by any means. I think that's a cool business, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but realize it's a business. Now, is that is that place actually having activity? Probably. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, we will, and this is something we ask our clients. Okay, this is what we're going to do. What do you want us to do when we find it? Right. We're just not going to tell you it's there. Um, do you want us to get rid of it? Do you want us to document it? Do you want us to? What do you want us to do? And I think 99% of the time we're like, uh, get rid of it. And uh, we can start that process, but it's always up to the homeowner 
or the uh, business owner to take care of that. And we're, 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 all, we're always there a step away. Because there are criteria and in, in a situation like that. There's, there's criteria that always has to be met. Mm -hmm. uh, every, anything from just changing stuff in the business, changing stuff in the home as far as physical. But I mean, there's potential life changes that have to be made in a situation like that. And I always use this analogy about, you know, when you come in and vacuum your carpet, but if you're going to throw dirt on the floor after we left, I mean, we can't help you anymore. So, I mean, there are some situations where you know, we've, we've laid out, this is what needs to be done to take care of uh, what you've got. You know, we've done this. Now this is where you as the, the client has to do their part because it's, it's not, it's 50, 50 guys. It's not a hundred percent us. We, uh, the client has to take care of this stuff also. If anyone has any questions or uh, anything like that, just post them. I know it's awfully quiet out there, guys. The last person I saw it says that Ashley was watching. Guys, if you're out there, say something. I know the video's live. I'm watching it. So if you have any questions, and I'll honestly check it. Check our uh, uh, what's that thing? Internet web page. Boy, I'm old. Uh, check out the internet at paranormalhelpministries.com. Uh, it'll exactly tell you number one, but paranormal my, help ministry singular dot com. Thank you. Sorry, <laughs> ministry dot com. Uh, check that out. Uh, number one, it'll show you that my profile picture was about twelve years ago because um, there's about sixty more pounds on me. But more importantly, exactly who we are, what we believe, and how we approach it. And um, check, you know, check us out if you're one of our followers. Um, if, if you have any questions, shoot them to you. We'll be glad to ask. Um, we're not really going to give. Uh, There's something about people named Leah. What? Because I said say something in the chat, and Leah said, said something. Um, <laughs> That's but, something you would do. I yeah. put the link to our website in the chat, guys. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Jody, we are based... If anybody heard that noise, we've got cats in the house that are chasing each other. And one of those cats weighs 30 pounds. So it sounds like a small child running through the house. Uh, Jody, uh, real quick, we are located in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Leah's bringing Sherlock around here so you can see this is a 30-pound cat. It's a small baby. He's huge. Jody, we're based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, but we, uh, we, we've done cases in Kentucky, Ohio, uh, Alabama. We've gone as far as Oklahoma, and we deal with uh, phone and uh, web-based cases from all over the world. Oh, uh, yeah, Florida. We just recently came back from Florida. And we have, we have done consultations or um, consulted on other cases where we kind of specialize in what we do. Uh, as far as I believe Singapore was one of them. Singapore, Singapore Australia. Australia, the UK, Africa. I mean, it's it's mind boggling how many uh, across the pond locations that we've uh, consulted on. So, just to wrap up, Yuri. Hey, and Brad, uh, Brad just signed in too. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Hey, I appreciate y'all checking us out. Uh, we'll just cap. Uh, cap. On, on the 14th of September, we will have a live um, investigation again. The, this is a location we've been to before, and it, it's a really cool investigation. The client's awesome, by the way. He really yeah. is a good man, a really good man. Uh, I've seen some really good change in his life the last, the last year. Uh, so we're very proud of him. We had nothing to do with those changes, but no. we're still proud of him. Again, that's where the client has to do their part. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, so on the 14th, we're doing it live. So tune in for that. We're going to do. A, we're going to try to hook it up so we can do that night vision. We're going to do a live stream and just post the camera in one spot after our initial walkthrough of of locations. Yeah, we're not the most tech savvy team, uh, and I say that in 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 jest and in all seriousness. I mean, we we don't need or use a whole lot of tech. Uh, we it's not our focus. But one thing that we are trying to do for the, the benefit of Facebook and those of you that tune in is we're trying to set up a system so that we can live stream in night vision. Now I know that there are several teams out there that, that do that and know how to do it. And I've reached out to a couple of them to try to get some ideas. But if there's anybody watching that knows a good way, 
um, we can set up a camera. Our night vision camera will plug in through our laptop, and we can stream that way. However, the laptop has to be connected to Wi-Fi in order to stream, which, of course, if 85% of the locations we go to don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're basically tied down to whatever we can use to make our uh, – make our phones work in order to do that. So if anybody has a, an idea or a setup that has worked for them in the past where they are able to stream uh, in such a fashion, uh, please give us a shout because we're just, we're trying several different things again for you guys uh, so that you can actually, I know it, it has to be a pain whenever you're watching us do a live and it's the camera pointed at another camera screen. It's yeah. not the clearest thing in the world. So hey, Mike's right. If you got any questions, again, we're not tech savvy. Um, I mean, to the point, my grandson over the weekend changed the ringtone on my phone, and I still ain't figured out how to fix that, and he's on six. Uh, of course, every time my phone rings now, it sounds like I'm farting. So it's interesting to the people around me, but the folks in the church didn't really enjoy it. Uh, but that's fine. Jody, thank you. Uh, where are you located? You say you're a little far to go on investigation. Um, he says he's a little far away, but he started watching us to learn more on how to do proper investigations. So. Very cool. Thanks for uh, that's the whole reason that we do this. Yeah, Joe, tell tell us where you where you're from. It's not like we're going to stalk you. Um, we just want to know where you're from, and I mean, maybe if you're close, we can meet you somewhere. We've got locations. Uh, we've got a lot of clients that have that really do trust us and reach out to us. And I, I would say even re recently, most of our investigations have came to us by client referrals or people who know us personally. That's true. Uh, because we're not known as the stir the pot, pot investigators um, we're not going there stirring up anything we're not like i mean I'm, i've said this time and time again i almost feel like it should be a secondary tagline underneath our uh, our motto which is uh, we're not here to to convince you we're here to help i think the other one should be we're not like everybody else that's it because <laughs> uh, we're definitely not like your normal investigation team um and that's not saying anything bad about any investigators. Please don't take that the wrong way. Um, it's just that we're saying that because, I mean, we've been told that by numerous other places that, you know, y'all are not at all what we expected, which is good. That's kind of what we want. <laughs> oh. Springville, Tennessee, that's not that far no. away. You're in the same state. I mean, the how far, how far is Springfield from Chattanooga? Leah, map it. Springville, Springville, Tennessee. My back just popped. Springville. Springville, Tennessee. Hey, Jody, if you're interested, absolutely shoot us a message. Uh, we'll work something out if we fit. Four hours? We've driven 10 to Oklahoma before. It was eight to go to Florida. I drive to Indiana twice a week. Nothing. Of course, I don't remember half of it, but... That's somebody else's following. Taking name. those Kalanapan? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's a lot of cocaine. That's what it is. Just a lot of cocaine. I was trying to make Mike spit water on him. Um, but we we absolutely like everybody watching us. Uh, and thank you for the kind words. We we do do investigations different. We don't do it to get results. We're just literally there to collect information and provide assistance to our homeowners and clients. And we realize we need to branch out to uh, to the investigators a little bit too. And we have been referred to cases. Uh, we've got referrals from Texas where we're on call on the phone in case of a, a possession issue, um, and we we help out with that. Uh, but we definitely would love anyone who is interested to or tell someone who is interested to check us out, shoot us a little line. Uh, we'll pick that person. Um, and it, the only thing that we require is, like, you know, if you got a medical issue, it's like every time you sneeze, your eyeball pops out. Hey, tell us. Because I'm going to kind of freak out when it happens. Um, uh, or, you know, or if, um, you know, you don't have to worry about anything other than that. And just bring a flashlight. And you usually don't need, Leah doesn't carry flashlights. Uh, I've begged her to carry them. She doesn't. Because <laughs> you're shining in her face every 30 seconds. <laughs> because there's always one in your face. And um, and by the way, this is not the Stargate to Atlantis. Uh, We're trying to open a portal. It's only halfway there. <laughs> you say that. Yeah. Almost. 
You might buy your house. <clears throat> so, guys, we're uh, we're actually already into our second hour. Um, I know that um, a lot of times on our second hour, it starts to dwindle just a little bit. Uh, I know it's late, people, but you know the excuse is nobody has to work tomorrow. It's labor day. Anyway, uh, but if you guys, uh, if anybody has any questions, we'll actually look to start wrapping this up here in a minute. If no one has anything they want to add or any questions they want to ask. One thing I want to add real quick while you guys are typing questions, because I know that's what you're going to do. Um, when we were going back to talking about Ed and the Gansfield experiment, the type of people doing that and when to do it, uh, I did an article back when our newsletter was actually in print before we went to the live, uh, live media about the Gansfield. Now, I can't quote you exactly which issue it is. Uh, I can go back and I can post that, or you can just go through and read all of them because they're all really good reads. Uh, but you go to our website at uh, paranormalhelpministry.com, and we actually have an area where the uh, uh, the newsletters are archived. I did a, a pretty thorough uh, uh, article about the Gansfield. Uh, I have done, as far as conducting the experiment, on several occasions with several different uh, mm -hmm. test subjects. Uh, I myself have done it once. So, so subjects. Subjects. There's more than one person. I'm just like you're brainwashing them. Yes. Test subjects. Anyway, so the experimentees, you like that better? Volunteers. Uh, volunteers. I've had everybody that I have done that experiment with has had different results. Um, even myself, whenever I did the experiment, I didn't <coughs> see anything. I didn't hear anything. I got... Uh, very paranoid. Uh, I don't know if it was just because, you know, your vision is blocked and you can't hear anything, but I just kept getting an extra, a strange feel, feel of paranoia during the experiment. And I've only done it the one time. I'm not sure if I would do it again. But that article is a really good read. Um, it's not something for the faint of heart. It's not something that we recommend people just go out there and do. Um, it needs, if you're, if it's something that you're going to do, I would recommend it be conducted by someone that is experienced in it around people that you trust. If you saw the live feed, whenever Ed started getting too deep into it, we pulled him out. We made the call to get him out of there. And you want to be with people that you trust in that situation. Um, if you have, you know, a, a, a heart condition, you need to take that into consideration. If you have, PTSD for any reason, uh, I would say it would not be something for you. So just take a moment if you have time, go back and read that, that article. It's not something that it's just for anybody to try. It's because it can really, really open you up and it can really cause some harm. Uh, Jody, if you're talking about the Gansfeld, it's G-A-N-Z-F-E-L-D, Gansfeld. It's German for entire field. It's a cool experiment. I get that. I really do. Um, People see it on TV and they're like, oh, I got to try it. Well, Which, I mean, that's how we, I mean, I'm not knocking that because that's how we started about it. It was something I saw. It was like, I want to see what it does. Because being the believing skeptic, as I put it, that I am, if I see something out there that people are, are um, a technique that's being used, unless it's outside of what I believe, I'm going to try it. It's just like the SLS camera. I built an SLS camera because I'm not 100% convinced that those, uh, that what people are picking up is actually paranormal. We have found several instances with an SLS camera where it's thrown stick figures on reflective surfaces, framework, anything that even remotely resembles a human frame, it's going to try to project that. So I'm not 100% convinced. I know some people have gotten some really good evidence on it. I haven't done that yet. So the main reason we decided to try the Gansfeld was, again, because it's a it's an experiment that people seem to have uh, work with. I wanted to see if it worked, and so far we've had some very interesting results on it. So, I mean, you know, somebody's saying they're out there using a Ouija board, or I, I, I won't even use a spirit box anymore. I used to use, I've used spirit boxes in the past. I've heard my name. Not my first name, my last name, which is not that common, uh, called out on a spirit box before. But I've come to the belief in later years that the spirit box is nothing but an electronic Ouija board. 
So I have, I've completely gotten away from it. But I'm open to suggestions when it comes to experiments and stuff like that in the paranormal. As long as it doesn't uh, cross the boundaries in my belief system, I will, I will try it to see what kind of results we get. Got any questions? Let's see, Nick, have you done that experiment in a controlled safe environment first to give you a baseline? Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I, actually, when was the first time we conducted that experiment? The boat. The boat. Yeah, it was actually um, in the gift shop area. Mm -hmm. um, we did it. Uh, it was a location that whenever we had been in, uh, invited by the client to come there, uh, the boat itself was where the activity was, but there was nothing in the gift shop. Nothing reported in the gift shop. We didn't pick up anything in the gift shop. So that's where we decided to hold the first experiment was, like Nick said, a, a safe, controlled area to see what happened. Now, we got some interesting uh, results yeah. because, again, um, and this segues into Jody's question, did it help you open up to hearing or seeing the paranormal? Um, it does during that time frame, Jody. So because it's that whole adage, you know, if you lose one of your senses, the other senses become heightened in order to make up for the lack. A blind person, uh, their hearing becomes more uh, in, uh, intense. They can smell things better. Uh, it tries to make up for that. So if you are in complete sensory deprivation, which is what the Gansfeld experiment does, it covers your eyes. You've got a strobe. Uh, the light can be strobing or the light can be still. We mainly do the strobe, but the whole point of it is so that Otherwise, if you're in a dark room and you're, you've got the ping pong balls over your eyes, all you see is blackness, which, you know, you, your eyes are closed. You're in a dark room. Everybody's used to that. But if you put a light behind that, it gives you that feeling of nothingness. You see, you're seeing into a void. And then you've got the white noise in your ears. You can't hear anything that's going on. So it causes the other senses to be heightened. And it can um, open you up, at least during that time period, to uh, paranormal activity. Now, does it do anything long term? I'm not sure yet. Haven't seen anything because we take precautions. Uh, those of you that saw the live feed, as soon as we got Ed out of that, uh, I blessed him. We took communion. Uh, we make sure that if we're going to do something like that, we're not going to take it home with us. To your point, Jody, um, that's why where ninety percent of the field kind of makes a mistake is they're wanting to open themselves up, and you have to do that a little bit anyways, because to get the evidence for the client. Uh, we do that. Uh, one, we just we did it to see what, what would happen as far as in is this just horse hockey, people making stuff up? Is this a little paranoia because you can't control the situation? What's going on? Um, I'll admit that I've I believe a lot of it was just, uh, for me anyways, I thought it, at, before, before I did it anyways, I thought it was just because you couldn't control the situation, your your senses, your, your, your brain is always scanning to balance itself out, and that I, think, I figured that was the way the body adapted, and I, um, I'm eating my words today because that experiment was... Uh, I will say it's interesting, but it, it's dangerous. But what you're saying isn't wrong because yeah. the brain that's the way your brain is wired. If you completely deprive the brain of everything that it uses to sense itself, it's going to try to make sense of whatever uh, is there. I mean, it's the same concept, and I never can pronounce the word right. Whenever you see you know, dogs and cats up in the clouds or you see a face in a design in the tile on the floor, and you're, you know, whenever you see a Another example that I thought was kind of interesting, I read something about this here the other day. Uh, whenever you see a car driving down the road and you see a face because of the eyes and the bumper, our brains are wired to do that, to see try to, to see patterns and to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. So there are situations, and again, this comes in with, um, this is why it's important, you know, if you're suffering from PTSD or any other type of mental ailment even, uh, this is the experiment for you because your brain will start to try to make sense of what it's seeing if it can't process it right. Oh, Paradolia, thank you. I, I never can pronounce the word right. But it, it's it's a twofold thing. I mean, yes, like Ed said, it your sometimes it is just your brain trying to make sense of things. 
And on the other hand, I mean, it can't open you up because, again, you have been completely, I mean, you are opened up. You are completely vulnerable in that situation. The experiment was originally in its original form in Germany. The way it would be conducted is Ed would sit here with his ears and everything blocked off, and I would go into another room and sit and draw pictures or write down words and try to mentally project and think those words to him. And then whenever we would come back and we'd say, okay, what did you get? And if I drew a picture of a dog and Ed's like, oh, I was thinking of a dog for some reason, there's a possibility. And we have done that in the experiment as well. We did that in Westland at warehouse. We, uh, we've done that at the warehouse. We did that at the gift shop the first time we ever did it. But I mean, to look that up, you can actually, you know, <laughs> I, w I don't suggest this, but the FBI does have a database of unclassified things and look up psychic viewing. <clears throat> um, it, it's, it's a release document. It's, it's out there for the internet. Just look up psychic viewing. They did it all during World War II and it really big in, in Korea and Vietnam. Um, is that stuff real? Uh, I don't know, uh, but there's something there. Uh, they probably still have those, uh, Experiments going on. So don't get me started on government experiments, MK Ultra. I could do a a documentary, uh huh, about MK Ultra. Uh, I don't want to say anything because uh, you might have to smother yourself with a pillow tonight. <laughs> when your hands behind your back. Right. Um, but all of a sudden the live feed goes out and it's like, what happened? <laughs> and then you never hear yeah. from us again. CIA website pops up. <laughs> Go out, my car blows up. People, okay. people are suddenly like, who, who are paranormal? We've never heard of them. <laughs> Most people never heard of them. Okay. Apparently, we're paranoid, right? Um, never. So, we're going to wrap it up. I, I think that's good. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good place to stop here. Yeah. We've we've kept everybody up awake long enough. So, unless anybody's got any other questions, we are going to go ahead and sign off. So, remember, our next live and also uh, will be September 14th. Mm -hmm. And that's your deadline to get your uh, entry in to be a guestigator. Thank you, Nick Whitman, for that. And uh, we'll investigate on September 27th. And also, another thing, if you want to investigate with us, you got to be willing to, to be on camera. Yep. Unlike Leah back there, who never wants to be on camera. I'm kidding. She's always on our lives and, and videos and we do investigations. But. So, yeah, uh, again, send us a Facebook message. Why do you want to investigate with us? And then we'll do the drawing on the 14th, and we'll take you on the 27th. So that's all I've got. Ed, Leah, y'all want to add anything? All right. We appreciate y'all tuning in tonight. Y'all be safe. Uh, just quick, if, you, if you're going to drink, that's fine. That's great. Don't drive. Call a cab. Or an Uber. Or don't go home. Don't, yeah. Find a place to sleep. So there's Miss Leah. Well, your head looks really small compared to mine, mine. What's the deal about that? Because mm -hmm. I have a big head. She has a little head. Oh, I blame my own beard. No, oh. ginormous. What you are, little baby? Wow. Apparently, we're nestling. and that, that'll be next month's topic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that kind of puts things in perspective. Yes. Whoa. So appreciate y'all staying tuned and staying up. And I'm gonna have to walk over there. <laughs> just I'll, I'll, I'll end it. Okay. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all be safe. Night, y'all. There, I'll be screenshot. Wait. Man, ain't over yet. Oh. <laughs>